Imagine you're working at a neuroscience research lab. Your team has access to a collection of MRI scans from Alzheimer's patients, and your job is to help automate the most tedious task, segmenting the hippocampus. When we say segmenting, we mean identifying and labeling every voxel in the MRI volume that belongs to the hippocampus, separating it from surrounding brain tissue and background. This is what's necessary to quantify its volume precisely and monitor subtle structural changes over time, which are key indicators of disease progression and therapeutic response. But this is painstaking work. Segmenting can take hours per scan, and it's not just time intensive, it's inconsistent. Different annotators will draw slightly different boundaries. Even the same annotator might produce different results on different days. That variability introduces noise into downstream analyses, which is a problem if you're trying to detect subtle changes in volume over time. So what do you do? Naturally, you turn to deep learning. You train a unit to do this segmentation automatically, right? Well, if you do, you'll quickly hit another wall. There's just not that much data to base your model on, and the resolution is typically low. Larger data sets and higher resolution images would produce better segmentation results, but you're going to be hard pressed to gain access to either. You need to make use of what's available. How can you do that? How do you squeeze decent performance out of a small, low resolution data set. That's exactly what the authors do in this paper. And that's what we're going to explore on today's episode of Journal Club. If you're already a member, you just got access to this episode. Log in and watch it anytime. See you there.